Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the unread gem. Now, if you've ever wanted to set up these unread notifications before, but you feel like a full-fledged notifications gem is too much, this is a great way to do it, just to let readers sort of know that you have like a new blog post posted or that there's a unread comment or something. It's just a really easy way to set that up. Uh, of course, it's not a complete substitute for a full-fledged notification system. But this is something I like to do when I'm just trying to get the readers to notice something on the page uh, that they haven't seen yet that they probably should. So what we're going to do is just create a quick little test post here and then we'll refresh over here and you can see this counter goes up uh, for this post page. I can come over here, create one more post just to make sure it's not a fluke. Come over here, refresh. Now you can see we have two unread posts. If I click on this, it takes me to the post page. At this point, if we go back to localhost port 3000, you'll see now the unread counter is back to zero. It's basically how it works. We also have it set up to uh, mark it as red if you visit the actual post itself. So that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead and let's create this. We're gonna go ahead and CD out of here, do a Rails new video, and then we'll go ahead and CD into it and run a code dot. Now, like I mentioned for this, we're gonna be using the unread gem, and I'll show you a couple tricks uh, for how to use it to hopefully make your life a lot easier. So we're gonna come in here, and the first thing we have to do is add the gem. So we're gonna do bundle add unread, and we're also going to add device because we're using the device user accounts. After we have device set up, we're then gonna go ahead and uh, do the rest of this stuff. So I'm gonna F11. We're gonna start with the Rails G device install command to install device. We'll then do a Rails G device user command to add our user accounts. We'll then create a scaffold for our post with a title of string and a body of text, just like that. We're then gonna go ahead and do a Rails G controller pages home so that we can have a home page to look at. And now we can go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate. Okay, so for the unread gem, the first thing we have to do is run this Rails G unread migration. So we're gonna go ahead and run this Rails G unread migration. This will generate one more migration for us. We can go ahead and run a DB colon migrate again. And now you have this essentially set up. The way this is gonna work is we're gonna come into our app, our models and our post.rb. Inside of our post.rb, we're gonna say that this acts as readable because these posts are readable. We then say it's uh, acts as readable on created at, and then in our users, we can say acts as reader right here. Of course, the different the differentiating factor here is that users are the readers and posts are the readies or the readables. Uh, but you can also say, you know, some users might only be uh, readers uh, or you can, you know, make it so that everyone works like this. So this is a way to sort of set it so that it's only true for admins, right? Uh, but in our case, that's not really what we're trying to accomplish here. At this point, we have our posts and our users. So we can actually go ahead and close both of those. Now what we wanna do is come into our controllers. So in our, uh, let's go into our pages controller first uh, because this one has uh, less to do with the actual reading gem. So for our pages controller, the first thing we wanna do is do a quick little check to see if the user is signed in. Uh, if the user is signed in, what we want to do is uh, just say something like at unread underscore count is equal to post dot. And this is where even what ChatGPT generated for me wasn't correct, which shouldn't surprise anyone. Uh, the way that I did this count, it's not really mentioned in this page, uh, but all I did was a unread by uh, the current underscore user and then I did a dot count because this will grab all the posts that are unread by the current user and then it'll just count them up. If I come to this page, the way they did the count, get unread comments count for a document. Uh, this is a little bit more involved. This is if you have some like nesting or something. Uh, and again, I checked the GitHub repo if you want this code, uh, but this requires you to create a hash with your documents and then you can just read through that for figuring out uh, you know, how many things there are. This allows you to do it all through one query as well. So maybe there's a more efficient way to do this, but this is just how I figured out how to get this to work. Okay, so that's how we get the unread post count. Now, what I usually do is I just set the unread count to be the total number of posts if the user isn't signed in. Of course, you can alternatively just not display the count if the user's not signed in. That's ultimately up to you. But okay, that takes care of our pages controller. Let's come into our views, our 
uh, pages and our home page. So in our home page, what we want to do is just create that quick little if the user is signed in block. And then we say uh, if they're signed in, let's say they're signed in as an email. Uh, and then we can do something like here's a link to a logout button. But of course, uh, this is not correct because this is now outdated. So we're going to say method colon delete. And then we're going to say data colon turbo underscore method colon colon delete. The turbo methods required for Rails 7, I believe, and this should now allow the sign out button to actually work. We're then going to create a else block where we just say sign up or sign in. Finally, to do the unread post count, we can do that right up here. Where we say link to posts hyphen unread, and we put the number sign so that we can see this is like number five to say this is, you know, five unread posts. And then inside of here, we just grab our unread count. We then link to the post path. And now our post page is done. So we can come over to localhost port 3000 real quick, uh, and then come over to slash pages slash home, and our, our home page should work. So let's sign up, dean at example.com. I'm gonna hit, uh, or I'm gonna use this email as the password as well, so it's easy to log in. And then we're just gonna go back to pages slash home. So you can see here I log in, it says posts on red, number of zero click on that and that works just fine. You could of course change this so that if it's zero, it doesn't even show that uh, number zero. But okay, let's go to our pages or our posts now. So in our post index, this is where we want to have these things get marked as red uh, when we visit this page. So when we come to this page with all of our posts, this should ideally get marked as red. Can't do that here because that's actually something we wanna do in our controller, but we can come into our, uh, or our partial here and inside of our post partial, we can create a quick little thing where we do a check if the user is signed in. So we say if the user signed in and the post is unread by the user, we then want to display something that says this is a new post. So if you ever visit the post page and we haven't read it yet, it'll say new. And then if you ever visit it again, it should not say new. So here we see this says new and this won't go away until we actually make this uh, marked as red when we visit the post show page here, uh, or in this case, the post index page. Let's go to the specific post show page and make sure this goes away first. To do that, we have to come into our post controller, oops, post controller, and inside of our post controller, we want to set in the post page a quick little thing. Uh, I don't feel like setting up a bunch of device authentication here, so I'm just going to return unless the current user, which is saying return unless the user signed in. And then to mark this post as red, we can just do a at post dot mark as red for the current user, and that'll work just fine. If we come over here now, I'm going to hit enter, and then if we refresh, you should see the new goes away. And if we scroll through our terminal here, we can see insert read marks uh, into the uh, database. So this is now marked as red for my user for the rest of all time. Okay, so let's come back to our index page now. Let's create another new post. We'll say test and case, click create. Unfortunately, by creating it, that marks it as red already. That's good, but it means we can't really test it here. So I'm gonna go over to localhost port 3000 slash posts. I'm gonna do a new post with a test and just a misspelled case. And this should allow us on our index page to see a new post that doesn't get marked as red yet because the index page doesn't work like that. So let's go ahead and let's mark it as red if we visit the index page. First thing we're gonna do is just again, return unless the current user with our guard clause, we put it after our post at all so we can at least set our posts and then return. And then if we ever get through it, we can just create a quick little block where we say uh, at post.each do post. And then we just mark the posts as red uh, if you get to that point. So we say post.mark is red for current user, just like we did before, but now we loop through them all if we ever make it to this page. Of course, if you're using a pagination gem, this is where you'd have to break it up by the number of posts on that page, as opposed to just grabbing the at post.each, right? So you'd have like your at pagey pages or whatever, and then you'd have to say at pagey pages.each do, you know, pagey page post or whatever and then mark those as red. But you get the idea. We can now come over here and if we refresh our, uh, oops, if we save this and then refresh our index page, we expect this new to disappear, which it does. And in our terminal, we can see here that it marked that as red as well. So that's pretty cool. Now let's come back to our pages slash homepage. See, it says un unread is set to whatever number. So let's come back into our incognito window real quick, do a new post, one, two, three, four, five, six, click create. And then we'll do one more where we say like, I don't know, just some random stuff. If we come over here and refresh now, we can see this number is two. If we click on this, this should now be marked as red. All of these are marked as red. If we come back, 
and refresh, the number will be zero. You can, of course, make it so that if you go back, it reloads the page, so this isn't an issue. You can make it if you go back, it reloads the frame, um, but it really depends on how you want to handle it. I'm really not sure what you prefer to do in your app. There's plenty of examples of, you know, stopping the back button from not refreshing, etc. So it really depends on what you want. But for the most part, I think users kind of are okay with going back and things being the way they left them, I'd imagine, and then refreshing to get that number to go away. At least that's something that makes sense to me. I don't know. It's up to you. But that's pretty much it. If you want to see how to uh, sort of experiment and figure out how to uh, like learn what these methods are, of course, the readmes are always great, but sometimes they don't cover what you need them to. In which case, what you can actually do, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a Rails S here, uh, is let's come to our post controller and I'm just, oops, our uh, pages controller. I'm gonna add in a quick little console right here. Refresh, that'll cause our console to pop up. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll in a bit. Uh, what you can do is you can grab something like our, uh, let's say our post, uh, we'll say post equals post dot first. And then if you wanna see what you can do with the post, you can just say post dot methods. It gets you all the methods that you can do on the post. Uh, but in this case, I knew this was the red gem or the unread gem. So I knew I was looking for keywords with unread. So what I did was something like post dot methods dot grep and then inside of parentheses, a slash with the word red slash and then parentheses. And if you run that, you can see here everything that has the word red inside of it. So we can see mark as red with an exclamation mark, which of course is what we used to mark this as red uh, in our post controller, right? You see the red marks, which is what we were setting in the, the terminal when this gets updated. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff like the unread question mark, which is how we can check if a post has, uh, if the post is unread by a current user. So you just do something like post.unread question mark. You run that, it says wrong number of arguments. So you can reasonably deduce this argument here that it needs is the current user. And you can see this post is not unread by the current user, which means it is read. So it's just stuff like that where those quick little, you know, shortcuts can save you a lot of time if you're trying to figure this out. Maybe the readme doesn't cover something. In this case, it covered a lot, but there's some stuff I was getting stuck on, like the post count where I just kind of had to put it together. And this is usually what my problem solving looks like and it doesn't take longer than like two or three minutes. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.